Hey fam and welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So for those of you who are finding my channel for the very first time, my name is Marshawn and I'm your life and relationship strategist. I help men and women alike to create the relationship that they want, need, and desire by helping them to implement simple tips and strategies within their relationship so they can create that perfect relationship for them. All right, so today for my book lovers out there, we will be discussing, we will be discussing this book right here. Is the lighting going to let me do it? No, I'm having trouble. Okay, so the title of this book is I Love You and I'm Leaving You Anyway by Tracy McMillan. We will talk about it right after this. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back. So again, we will be discussing this book right here. Again, the lighting is not going to let me show. Anyway, it is the title I Am Loving You and I'm Leaving You Anyway by Tracy McMillan. Ladies and gentlemen, this book right here <laughs> had me on edge and it is a page turner uh, from the very beginning. And her introduction just had me all the way over the top because I was like, oh, damn, I got to keep reading this. Like, oh, she she off the chain. Um, so let me just see. Um, I'm going to read to you what she actually is. Tracy McMillan is a film and television writer, most recently on AMC's Emmy Award and a Golden Globe winning series Mad Men. This is actually from 2010. So anyway, and before that on Showtime's Emmy Award winning series, the United States of Terror, the ABC drama Life on Mars and NBC drama Journeyman. She lives in Los Angeles with her 14 year old son. Again, this is 2010. So we're all older now. Anywho. So some of you guys actually might know her by what I just read off of here. If you look her up online, then you'll definitely get a chance to see a picture of her. I didn't hear about her until this book personally, but she sucked me in. She actually had a pretty um, unique, <laughs> is the word I'll use. She had a pretty unique childhood. Um, this is a memoir, so it is her story. She, Her dad was a pimp. Her mom was a prostitute. Her dad is black, her mom is white, and this is during the time where it was basically like, no, no, ain't nobody doing no mixing. However, her story is unique in the fact that, again, her dad was a pimp, but he was also a drug dealer. He was also um, the, the guy that was in and out of prison all the time, and then his, his mom, I'm, I'm sorry, her mom was actually the prostitute, which was one of her dad's workers. She ended up getting pregnant, and, you know, um, the family didn't like the black guy. You, we all know how that story goes, right? But, interestingly enough, her dad was the one who made sure that she was taken care of. And she, she still didn't have the best upbringing. Her mom um, basically walked away, and her dad ended up taking care of her. And when he was in and out of prison, he always knew where she was. She did end up in foster care, in and out of foster care. And then on one of his long stretches of being out of prison, um, she lived with his wife. And end up going back to prison and the wife end up taking care of her. Actually, at the time, they was boyfriend and girlfriend. But then they did a marriage while he was in prison. And um, she ended up adopting Tracy. And then that relationship wasn't the best. Her name was Tanya. That relationship wasn't the best between them two. But she made it work. And I honestly, I have to say that this lady was so self-aware. And... I loved how self-aware she actually is and was, especially growing up. She talks about all of the things that she was thinking about uh, while she was going through many of these things. And she also knew that because, like, for instance, her stepmom, Tanya, when she was treating her bad, she knew that... Um, she didn't have to take on all of this stuff, and she took it as a child, but as she became a teenager, she would talk back more. She never got into a physical altercation with Tanya, but she um, wouldn't take the disrespect and the name-calling, and um, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't take it without like having a say herself. And so um, I felt like her introduction was very powerful. It actually sucked me in. I would love to read it to you, but it's a little bit lengthy, um, so I'll read something else to, to you. 
Um, I like the fact that she tells you about a story. I have my notes, which is what I'm looking at. The story that she actually tells herself about herself. Um, I want to read that to you because this could be something that we all could, or at least most of us can, um, can identify ourselves in, in her story, or at least a piece of it. So I have two inner males, the pastor and the pimp. And for a long time, it was confusing as hell. Dog. 75% of me is an upper class white boy, <laughs> a commitment oriented intellectual who got an IRA with his first job and thinks strip clubs are lame and slutty girls are just that. Slutty. The other 25% 25 of me is really, really horny. My UNG side would put together a relationship, a home, and a future. Then my inner pimp would trade it all away for one night in Bangkok or even Portland, Oregon, which explains how, oh, her boyfriend, bless his heart, was her perfect match. We each had a side of ourselves that wanted desperately to make a home, and we each had a side that would not or could not allow that to happen, but more on that in a moment. So I just love how, again, she was very self-aware, but then just for her to describe herself as a male, number one, and then as the pimp who would throw it all away in one night, and then as well as, like, um, what, what did she say, the, the slutty girl? <laughs> 75 oh no no that's what she got herself the upper class white boy so who who would just sit around and describe themselves like that number one as a male like i said then you're the upper class white boy and then you're you know thinking that the girls are slutty right and then on top of all of that now you're a pimp so She's very self-aware, and I have to respect that. And um, again, her her um, background and her upbringing was definitely completely different from what, I, from what I am used to or even heard about. So she definitely sucked me in. This is definitely a page turner, as I said. Oh, it has over 300 pages. It actually, has 334 pages within this book. It's paperback. It's easy to read. Again, um, let me see. I'm gonna read one more thing to you, and then I'm gonna wrap this up. Ah, so a lot of us can see ourselves in this as well, which is her explaining her anxiety and knowing it was from a from deeper trauma um, that she suffered from her parents. So let me find that to you, and then I'm gonna re wrap this up because it's just so many points that I could point out in this book, actually. So um, okay, so. I've been to enough therapy, read enough books, and have been rejected by enough men to know that this is not what it seems to be. Oh, the racing heart is real. The sleeplessness is real. The feeling of abandonment is real. But like a ventriloquist, ventriloquist who throws his voice into a creepy low puppet, none of this anxiety is coming from where it seems to be coming from, which is to say Paul. Again, Paul is her, her boyfriend. It's actually coming from a long time ago and far away where a little girl without her mother is waiting for her dad to come home. Her dad, who was probably out screwing some chick or pimping some hoe or caught up in some other activity. Her dad, who could be anywhere, returning anytime. But even though I know all that, I could swear the puppet's talking. Swear it. And here's what the puppet is saying. There is something wrong with you. You are not pretty enough not smart enough, not well-bred enough, not skinny enough, not rich enough, not sexy enough, and definitely not sexy enough to be chosen. There are people who will love you, yeah, but not anyone really, really wants you. So she called up her friend um, and got some therapy from her friend. I'm just um, winding that up. So what is this guy thinking? She's asking. And then her friend is just like, dude, that sucks. But it's also really rad. And she's like, rad? Like, why would you say rad? She said, because now you can get to get free. Free? Okay, keep going. Yeah, think about it. This isn't a new feeling. She, uh, she sucks in a deep breath, but she, then she starts to giggle. This is how you always felt. You know how some people can just string a few words together uh, that you heard a thousand times, but for some reason, this is the first time that you're actually hearing them and you know what they mean and you know that it's actually true. That's what's happening to me in this conversation with my friend. This is how I've always felt. And she's actually right. I remember feeling pretty much exactly this way with Andy Will in second grade. He always wore his t-shirt with a happy face on it, 
which was ironic because he was definitely a future Zoloft user. Anyway, I can't go no further on that, but when I say that this book sucked me in, it got so much juiciness in it. And again, it's somebody's real life story. I have to say that at a point in time, her her dad got out of prison. Now she's actually a grown adult. They end up doing cocaine together. She actually met with her mom, her biological mom, at some point, And she met her siblings at some point. And this book is amazing. It is creepy. It is mind-blowing. It's hilarious. It could be a tearjerker, depending on, you know, what emotional state you are actually in. And I'll actually read what Diablo Cody said about it. He said, this is everything a memoir should be. Hilarious, heartbreaking, and gorgeously written. By the time you finish this book, you'll want to marry Tracy McMillan, too. That's all I'm going to say about this book. Pick this, pick this book up. Of course, I will have a link to Amazon um, to purchase this book. And of course, you know, if you purchase it from my channel, I'll definitely get a small percentage of the purchase. But yes, pick this book up. Support Tracy McMillan. And wow, this was mind blowing to say the least. This was mind blowing. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh, this is a different type of relationship book. This is actually a relationship book, not only with herself. And you would think that the title talks about more about um, her her dating life or her marriage life, and she 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 does talk about. It, but really, the title was for her parents. I love you, and I'm leaving you anyway because again, her mom left her, and her dad left her several times because of his stints being in and out of prison. Pick up this book. You'll learn so much from it and you'll actually see yourself in some of the things that she's talking about. Maybe not everything in detail. You know, maybe your father wasn't a pimp. Maybe your mom wasn't a prostitute. But there's still some things that she's going through because she felt abandoned and just not loved as a child. And many of us can actually benefit from hearing somebody else's story and how they got through it. So I'll talk to you guys in a future video. Again, pick up the book. Click the link. Support your girl. Support Tracy. I'll see you guys. Deuces.